I 100% chose that espresso machine specifically because of the analog meter. Today, I wanted to talk to you about Dax. Big, fat, long, juicy Dax. Black Dax. White Dax. Thick Dax. Little itty bitty Dax. All right, in all seriousness, uh, Dax are digital to analog converters. It is the thing that takes digital audio and makes it analog. And at the mastering level, I have one, two, three, four, five choices. And I've set up my mastering console so that I can easily audition A, B, A, B, C, three of those five. Two that I'm not setting up is this little bitty guy. Really, its intention is um, for on the go listening at high quality. And, and then the other one that I don't have set up in the mastering chain right now is the, uh, the Grace M905. This guy has a DAC in it as well. Not that it doesn't sound great. It sounds great. The DAC that's built into the Grace M905, I'm actually using this for monitoring. So I can listen to input signal and quickly bounce back and forth from processed signal, input, processed, input, processed, input. It's a really good thing if you're mastering to be able to A, B stuff very quickly and precisely. Pro tip. Why different DACs? What's so special about DACs, right? I like to think of your digital to analog converter kind of like a pair of glasses. Every song is different and certain songs benefit from different converters that sound different, that do different things to the audio. So uh, I've chosen three particular digital analog converters because of how different they sound from each other. DAC number one, the Lynx Hilo. Probably the most transparent of the three. It can blast out audio as loud as 24 volts, super loud, super transparent. It, whatever you throw into it, that's uh, pretty much exactly what you get out of it. So if transparency is the name of the game, Hilo is the winner of the day. DAC number two is the Convert 2 by Dangerous Music. Convert 2. What can I say about Convert 2? Convert 2 sounds analog. If you're working on a track that needs an injection of analog flavor, Convert 2 is your choice. There is a natural rounding off of the top end, and I'd like to show this to you uh, with some actual graphs and data. A little bit of harmonic uh, coloration in, in, a, in a pleasing, good way. This one, however, does not go all the way up plus 24 decibels if you're going for voltage. It, it's not going to beat the helo, but also there's pieces of gear that you don't want to be pushing 24 volts into. Um, just for example here, Manly Massive Passive can handle it barely. Phoenix cannot handle it. Um, Neve handles it with flying colors. This custom box, uh, not even close. Deck number three would be the Antelope Audio Pure 2. Convert 2 by Dangerous is the only one that does exclusively D to A. The Hilo and the Pure 2 both handle also A to D. But I don't have them set up to do A to D. I have a different A to D converter and that's a story for another day. The Pure 2 uh, by Antelope is also very analog sounding, has some really good color, maybe a bit of a mid-range push. Great for rock and aggressive stuff, but maybe not my first choice for something like jazz or uh, acoustic singer-songwriter, something that needs to be a little more organic. Of the three, I'd say the Pure 2 would be the most colored converter. That is, what you put in, you get more and different out. Usually in a really good way. Sometimes it's not the right thing for the job. Let me pop into the computer and I'll screen share this and I'll show you with a program called Plugin Doctor exactly what these DACs are doing. Picture like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, where we're about to go on a little trolley into a new land. This is computer land. Okay, so here we are in a program called Plugin Doctor. It's one of my favorite programs. It's by DDMF. They're fun. Uh, they also make a really, really phenomenal compressor called the Magic Death Eye. It's, it's a analog emulation. What we're looking at here right now, this is the Lynx Hilo. Totally, almost entirely dead flat, bottom to top. You can see at the very top, up above 20K, there's just the slightest bit of roll-off, and we're talking maybe 
quarter of a decibel, and same thing at the bottom. Might even be less than a quarter decibel at the bottom, but you do see that there's movement. It's not digital flat. There is energy happening here, and that is part of the beauty of analog. Now let me switch over from the Hilo to the Dangerous Convert 2. Look at the high end. Look at that really gradual roll off, and it's pretty much dropping off entirely by 30k. Um, so once more, Hilo. Watch the top. Convert to. Hilo. Convert to. And now, here comes the Antelope Pure 2. That is Antelope Pure 2. We have a little bit more consistent top again. Um, it's not as much of a roll off as the uh, Convert 2. Convert 2 looks like it's doing like a whole dB down by the time it gets up to 30k. This is why I think it sounds analog. Pure 2 there's a bit more of a jagged edge. I mean, it's still ending at 30k, but it's, it's just a jagged edge. This is Pure 2, flipping back to the Hilo. Hilo, Pure 2, Hilo, Pure 2. So those tonally, um, frequency-wise, from sub-frequencies to supersonic frequencies, pretty dead even, whereas the Convert 2 you get this nice, uh, this nice roll-off. It really is. It, it sounds analog. It's an analog roll-off. I think it sounds great. Let's switch over to harmonics and have a look at that. Okay, so now we flipped over to harmonic analysis of these boxes. This is the Hilo, again, 500 hertz tone. It's at minus 0.1, so it's just right below, um, digital zero. These sort of static lines jutting up are low-level harmonics that are being generated and the fuzzy stuff at the bottom, that's noise floor. Noise floor, if you'll notice, um, sort of the whole top end of the noise floor is down at, shoot, what's that, 140? Flipping over now to Convert 2, watch the, uh, watch the harmonics change. Interesting, right? So at 500 you're gonna get a little a 1000 tone and here this also looks like uh, what is that 1500 there's Hilo there's Convert Hilo Hilo has more stuff going on up top Convert does not add that same stuff here too we're back to adding more stuff so you could see how when you're approaching zero Hilo and Pure 2 are gonna add harmonics to the signal. Convert to will not. I like that. That's cool. Let's switch this to a little less aggressive setting. Um, here's a minus six decibel tone and that is the Hilo at minus six and it is adding um, so 500 Hertz it's adding 1500 Hertz looks like. If I switch this to say 1000 3,000. Okay, cool. So that's like the first um, odd harmonic. Now we're at 1,000, we switch over to the Convert 2, and we have a little bit of that same 3,000, and just the tiniest bit of 5,000. Again, odd harmonics, that's okay. Pure 2. Um, that's also giving us 2,000. Interesting. That's an even harmonic. 3,000, odd harmonic. 5,000, odd harmonic. 6,000 even harmonic. No, it's not 7,000. Anyway, um, you can clearly see how the uh, Pure 2 is adding a little bit more to the signal than was originally there. The Convert, barely any, just in a very cool analog way. And the Hilo is doing its thing very nicely as long as you don't hit zero. You want to keep the noise floor, or you want to keep the um, ceiling a little bit below uh, clipping. Right now, I think my favorite of the day is the Convert 2. Um, I think if you're going out into the analog world you want things to sound a little bit more analog. Convert 2 can handle signal all the way up to digital zero and represent it fairly faithfully. I guess if I was looking for 
just um, the cleanest possible analog in and out, I would stick with Hilo. And if I wanted it to sound like analog, if, if, if I was dealing with a digital file that's been digital the entire time and it, and it sounds sterile, uh, Convert 2. Pure 2, um, there's nothing wrong with Pure 2 either. I mean, Pure 2 is a kick-ass sounding converter. Uh, but it is a little, just a little bit colored. You're gonna add some cool stuff to it. Why don't we do some listening examples, actually? Okay, here we are in Isotope RX, and uh, I'm not gonna play these first few files. I just want you to see them because uh, they would sound really annoying. The first file, the first three files are. It starts with a sine sweep. Um, it goes from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz and back, and then pink noise at. Um, like minus six RMS, something like that. Um, so you can see the Hilo, it's really uh, what what came in is what came out. You can see a little bit of, um, let me switch my pointer here. You can see like this, this little line here that's going up and that's a harmonic uh, and you can see it coming on the way down too. Um, but generally speaking, um, this looks pretty clean what went into the converter is what came out, and then the, the pink noise is pink noise. Um, convert 2, have a look at that. Switching back to Hilo, convert, Hilo, convert. Interesting how there's a bit more of uh, harmonics being generated there that you don't see um, in the Hilo. The pink noise, though, I mean, static looks like static, looks like static. You can see a little bit up at the top um, when we switch from Hilo to... Okay. You know, I deleted Facebook off of my phone. And ever since, Facebook has been texting me. I'm done. Hilo. Convert. Hilo. Convert. Have a look at the top end of the sine wave and how it gets a little darker on the convert and back to the helo, back to the convert, back to the helo. That's a cool comparison, I think. Um, and then we switch over to the pure two and you can see there's a little bit less harmonics on the pure two than there are on the convert, which I thought was interesting. That's what a sine wave and some pink noise look like through, uh, through those three converters. Now, we'll actually do some listening. Um, I mastered a big band track, uh, recently from the Pandemonium Big Band. Uh, these guys are super fun. I highly recommend you look them up on YouTube. They got, they're just doing great music videos of, of, uh, remote big band recording sessions and, um, I'm all about it. So here's a small sample of, uh, 241 sax break, um, that I thought would be really good as a demonstration of what the three converters can do. Okay, so here's the master flat. Here's just the the, uh, the actual master digital not converted. Burning. Okay. Um, same sample through the helo. Same sample through the convert too. And same sample through the pure two. Great. Um, I know they're all like. I don't even know if on YouTube you guys will be able to hear a difference, like, physically, because, um, I mean, if we're talking about MP3 quality, like, I think 128-bit kilobyte per second, whatever they call it, um, you, they just lob off everything above 16K. Like, you wouldn't hear a difference if that's the case, but, um, well, anyway, actually, this might be good. You'd probably, well, you will hear the difference here, um... The next test that I did was I took that main sample that has not been reconverted and I flipped the phase of the converted sample and I lined them up 
so that they'd be exact opposites and all you would see, all you would hear is the difference. That is what exactly is being added or changed by the different converters. Um, so when I did that and re-rendered the files, um, lined up and phase reversed, this is what was generated by the uh, helo. What you're listening to is simply the difference that the helo is bringing to the table. There you go. Not much. Just a little bit of high-end stuff, really. You can't hear too much of the drums other than like the sizzle and yeah, there's a lot of high-end, no low-end at all. Um, here is what the Convert 2 is bringing to the table. Interesting. Here's what the Pure 2 is bringing to the table. Yeah, so uh, like I said earlier, the Hilo is not adding much. If you're looking for a very uh, transparent converter, what comes out of the Hilo is whatever you feed it, pretty much. Yeah, that's cool. But what you're getting with the Convert 2, you're getting a little more. Same thing with the Pure 2, a little more. Pure 2 sounds a little sharper to my ear. Um, so maybe if you're going for more like uh, aggressive rock, punchy, uh, maybe the Pure 2 would be the better choice than the Convert 2. For big band jazz, I think Convert 2 would be the uh, clear and obvious winner. Okay, so that's the world of DAX in the uh, computer land. We're back in real life now. I hope that was interesting. I find it interesting. I've been kind of obsessed with D to A for some time, just, just all the different options there. I really, I strongly feel like songs that were mixed fully in the box uh, with lots of program material can benefit a lot just from going into the analog world and back out of the analog world with really good quality converters. Um, no additional processing added. Just that little bit of analog injection uh, can work wonders for an otherwise lackluster song. It makes things come alive a little bit. And having that choice between like transparent, analog, mojo, and being able to flip between the three with a click of a button, boom, 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 it's a sweet workflow. That's all I can say. It's super fun. It's musical. It's inspiring. It's like you get so much result instantly. <laughs>